I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to talk about how to migrate data from SQL Server to Snowflake. And in order to do that, we're going to use some pandas objects as well as our handy Snowflake connector, and uh, that's going to make it so that we can bring data in from SQL Server into a pandas uh, data frame, and then we're going to write that pandas data frame using write pandas into a Snowflake database. So without further ado, let's get to our data migration from SQL Server to Snowflake. Interested in coaching or one-on-one -on -one help on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Okay, so to get started in our example here, I'm in uh, SQL Server Management Studio and I'm just going to select the top thousand rows of this little table I have here called Bulk SQL and it's got not very imaginative data in it, but it's got uh, some number values and it's got uh, some text values and uh, so I can uh, select from the top or the bottom of that uh, million rows um, and um, that basically shows that we've got our million uh, rows of data. It's a small amount, but this is typical of what you might uh, insert into a big data platform if you're doing, say, uh, you know, ID value pairs and uh, something like that. But I'll, I'll count the, uh, the rows just using count star. And as you can see, uh, we've got a million rows in there, and that's what we're going to start with. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab this uh, file that uh, I've named already and uh, I'm going to start coding on that. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our, uh, our Snowflake uh, connector, uh, which is going to be our main means of uh, talking to the uh, Snowflake database. And then uh, from the uh, Pandas tools, now make sure that you install the right version of your Snowflake connector. Um, it's got square brackets pandas on the end of it when you do your pip install. Um, so make sure that you have the right one there because uh, then you can use these neat uh, little functions like write pandas which does uh, a whole bunch of cool stuff like the parquet files and chunking up the data as it goes across and all that stuff. It does it um, wonderfully. So uh, I'm going to grab the uh, write pandas and uh, pyodbc and and of course pandas itself and then I'll give some feedback to the user um, just saying that we're going to open SQL server and I'll create a SQL server connection string and uh, now you should probably note for those of you that don't use SQL server a lot um, the connection string uh, can differ and it's the same for Oracle and for other versions um, depending on you know uh, depending on what um, version of the database you're using, it might have a different, uh, a different driver. And in, in this case, I'm just going to use the default driver uh, for SQL Server, and uh, that's going um, to give me a connection. And I'll, I'll connect to a server instance on a server called Jupyter, and the instance name is uh, SQL 2017. And, uh, and then the database is going to be called uh, demonstrations, and uh, and the uh, the user ID will be uh, demo user, and then the password is just a, a simple password that I made up um, <clears throat> that uh, uh, sort of works on this database only. And so once you've got your username and password in there, and your connection string is ready. Um, you can go ahead and uh, you can sort of move on. So I'm just going to create a connection and uh, so I'll just say CNN is uh, it's equal to uh, pio.connect and that, that's going to give us our um, database connection to SQL Server and that's going to be using ODBC. I'll use the uh, CNN SQL as our argument for that and then I'll print opened and give some feedback to the user. And then uh, I'll close the same database connection and, um, and then I'll print close. And so this will be our first test um, just to uh, check and see 
that we can open the SQL server and that it'll run correctly. So if I look that over and uh, save it, and then uh, um, I can hit uh, F5, and that's going to run that and just see that if we can connect to our SQL server. Oh, I broke it already. I forgot a double quote. So this is pretty common uh, when you're coding this stuff. Don't, don't be discouraged if you get a lot of little errors as you're coding. So there you go. Okay, so I hit F5 on there, and uh, it opened the server and close the connection and so now we know that we've got our database connection and we can uh, move on to the next uh, step here. So from there I'll go you know I'll do a quick test and uh, I'm going to uh, create an SQL string and I'll just say select top uh, say a hundred star from um, the table which is called uh, bulk SQL I believe if I remember correctly and so that'll get the top 100 rows and if you if you're coming from other databases this is similar to the limit um, statement um, or limit keyword and uh, it basically stops it at 100 so that we can just get a sample of the data that we want to see and uh, I'll do it uh, my data frame is equal to pandas uh, pd.readsql and then I'll put in the SQL string and the connection and uh, and then I'll print, uh, let's print off the head of that data frame. We'll grab the top 10 rows of that and, uh, and then just see what we get, you know, uh, when I click F5 here. So there we go, it opens up, uh, connects to SQL Server, and there we go, we got the top 10 rows of our, or top 100, and then we took 10 of that when we printed, but we got all 100 into the data frame and that's exactly what we wanted to see. So that's going to sort of set us up to, uh, to, to move on. So uh, from there, what I'll do is I'm going to erase the uh, top 100, and I'll put the actual column names in just so that uh, uh, we can see what the columns are. So I'll put uh, select number values and num uh, text values. That's the name of the columns in that table. And uh, now we're going to get everything because I've, I haven't put any where clause on there. And so I've got a data frame head and data frame tail. And, uh, and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, hit F5 and uh, see what we get. Now it just sort of sits there. You can see it's opened SQL Server. Uh, and it's opened the connection. And now it's uh, sort of sucking in the data all in one shot. Keep in mind that you can use the uh, chunk size parameter for this. If you have a really big table, it'll do it in, in chunks for you. And that's super handy. Uh, it'll break the job up as the data frame is being populated. So that's something you might want to consider as well. So I'm just going to try and start my uh, task manager here so I can see the performance and how much CPU oh, it's already done. Okay, so. <laughs> So there was no use in starting the uh, performance monitor there. Uh, you can see it's grabbed the uh, top and bottom, you can see, of that uh, data frame. So it's got a million records in it. Um, they're very simple records, but it's got a million of them. And we're going to go ahead and uh, now that we know that we can get our data frame out, um, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and we'll start working on the Snowflake side of it. Uh, because now we've got uh, we've got a data frame in memory, and um, it's great because now we can we can just uh, use write pandas, and we're going to write that directly to a table. Uh, but first, we're going to create that Snowflake table because I don't think I have a, that table in my in my database that you created that I created. So I'm just going to make a, an SQL string, and I'm just going to say create or replace table. And I guess I'll call it like uh, 1 million, I don't know, uh, 1 million example. Uh, and uh, that should do it. And um, yeah, so this is going to get longer, I think, than I anticipated. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'm just going to uh, format this a little bit more nicely for our, our, our uh, editor here. I'll add the uh, string or the number values field and that's going to be an integer I guess and uh, and then the second field will be 
um, it's going to be a string. Now the, the data types in Snowflake are a little bit different. Um, in this case I'm just adding a, a, an integer and a string and uh, I believe those get translated to something like number 380 and, and, uh, and a var car with a massive number behind it um, uh, in order to you know get the uh, large amounts of data but um, in this case you can you can actually just say integer and string so I'll say my text values column is going to be a string data type and uh, and then uh, that should that should do it uh, for that um, insert or pardon me for that create table statement and uh, once we've got that we can go ahead and uh, we're going to create our snowflake connection so just to go back over the statement, and we're going to create or replace our table 1 million example, and we're going to have the field number values as an integer and text values, which is a string, and uh, that's going to create that in the database that we connect to in the schema that we're using. So we're going to actually set up the connection to Snowflake with all of that stuff um, included, because I typically when I'm connecting to this guy here, or this database. Um, I've been using the same kind of uh, connection string each time where I specify the uh, the warehouse and and the uh, schema and the database and and that stuff. So so if we run that creator replace it's going to happen in this uh, in this um, database here. So so I'm going to paste that in and then I'll clean up this uh, formatting here a little bit um, and uh, so as you can see it's got the user the password, um, the account name, um, the warehouse name, which is which we created in an earlier episode. You should go check out um, the early episodes of this playlist where I create the databases and the schema and all that stuff. Um, and uh, now that we can now and now we can connect using, um, you know, saying exactly where we want to be working in our connection. We don't have to, you know, go back and do the use, you know, use database. Um, um, you know, or use statements for, for each of those. So, so I'll put in my other, my temporary password here that I created uh, for this uh, database and uh, login. And uh, so that should fix that one. So now you can see you've got your create statement. We've got a connection for Snowflake. And uh, uh, we've got a close um, statement for our our, which we're going to move back up to be with our, our SQL Server stuff because we want that to close right after we get our data frame out. We want to close that connection to release uh, any resources there. So I'll actually put a SQL Server closed. So now that's totally closed and we can, uh, we can move on to our Snowflake stuff as we go down here. And um, now if we open it, we're going to close it. So we'll put that in as a, a statement near the end of our, our the end of our code here so we don't forget and we'll put uh, you know snowflake closed and we'll output that for the user so we can see what's happening there and uh, and then we can uh, create our cursor and we'll go CS is equal to CNN dot cursor um, and that's going to give us a cursor to run that SQL that we uh, created up above and for that, we'll go uh, cs.execute SQL, and that's going to run that statement to, uh, to execute our SQL and create the table. Uh, so I'll give some feedback to the user saying, uh, writing to Snowflake and uh, Snowflake table, and that will um, show that we're moving on. We've created our table. And uh, now what we can do is we can say, uh, we're going to get our return variables here, success, uh, n chunks, which tells us how many chunks are being created, n rows, and uh, underscore for uh, is equal to uh, write pandas, and then we'll put our arguments in for pandas. Uh, this is a really great little function um, that uh, does all the work in behind the scenes uh, with the parquet files and everything if you have something really big. Uh, you know, it definitely um, optimizes everything, which is awesome. So uh, we'll put in our, uh, S, our connection, our data frame, the name of the table we want to create, or the name of the table we want to uh, 
uh, write to, and uh, and then uh, also we'll we'll put in our quote identifiers as uh, uh, as <clears throat> uh, as false, and that's going to uh, to say we don't have any quote identifiers on that. Um, so uh, that's a a great uh, function, the right pandas. And uh, you can actually print out after, if you want, on your own project, print out the success and the number of chunks and the rows that got that actually got written. Uh, we're going to test that out today, the rows, but um, um, you can actually print those out into the uh, into the output as well if you want to. So we'll reuse our SQL string and we'll say that it is uh, select star from one million example, uh, where the uh, the number values is less than say 11. That should give us 10 rows. And uh, just as a as a test here, um, so we'll we'll go cs.execute and uh, our SQL string, and we'll create a new data frame called uh, data frame or df underscore results. And in order to uh, fill that data frame. We're going to use the fetch pandas all, which is part of the pandas tools that I mentioned above. And uh, in order to use these, make sure that you installed the right version of the Snowflake connector. It has the uh, it has pandas in square brackets at the end of it. Um, it so this won't will not work if you're not uh, if you don't use that one. Um, so we'll use cs dot fetch pandas all, and then we'll close our connection and. Uh, and we'll print the, the result uh, data set um, just so that we have something uh, to show from Snowflake to show that our operation worked out. And I'll say print operation complete at the very end. And I'll look this over and I'll hit F5. And then we can sort of see what we're going to get uh, as our output here. Okay, so I hit F5. I'm kind of expecting to get errors here because I kind of rushed through this. Uh, let's see, we're opening SQL Server, it's opened, and uh, it's create oh, create the Snowflake table. It uh, looks like I tried to use a closed connection, I'm using the wrong connection. Uh, I needed to put uh, SCNN, this is a, if you name your variables in a similar way, you could run into this, so you can see there I have to put an SCNN instead of the CNN, which I closed before, that's the the connection for SQL Server, I want to actually use my Snowflake connection, so I fixed that. Hit F5, what else did we break? Oh, there we go. Uh, so, cursor is closed again. Looks like I'm too crazy about closing connections. That one was a redundant close. You can see we have one in the third from the bottom there, so I'll save that. And we'll hit F5 again. And this time, Open SQL Server, we got it open. There's our data, writing to Snowflake. I smell, it looks like I spelled Snowflake wrong uh, in the last row there while it's uh, writing. And uh, there we go, okay, so that's the output from our Snowflake table. We were successfully able to migrate the data from SQL Server to Snowflake. So that is how you use Pandas and the Snowflake connector to migrate from SQL Server to Snowflake. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to migrate data from SQL Server to Snowflake. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Click the bell when you see the bell and put any questions or comments in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.